This week, nine Labour MPs left the party. And it's fair to say there's no shortage of independent-minded uh, backbenchers uh, still there, uh, trying to fight uh, from within. I'm joined by uh, one of them, uh, Stella Creasy. Thank you very much for Thanks, being on the programme this morning. First of all, what is your reaction to the news that we've seen this week uh, of uh, several Labour MPs feeling that they could no longer stay in the party? I'm gutted. Um, and I have called for the party from the grassroots to the leadership to not lash out right now, but to learn from what this tells us about the culture of our party and the challenges that we face. We've lost a good colleague of mine in Lucy Argerberger. <clears throat> Sorry, forgive me. I have to say, I'm deeply concerned by the reports of what happened on Friday night in my colleague Louise Elman's constituency. These are both proud people from the Jewish faith who are, Louisa was a Labour MP, Lucy, uh, Louise still is, who have faced unacceptable bullying and harassment because they are Jewish from members of our own party. If that isn't a moment for us as a party to look at ourselves and ask what is going wrong and what we must do to put it right, I don't know what is. I mean, Barry Gardner, who was on the programme mm. earlier, was saying that some of the response hasn't been quick enough, but Labour is getting on top of it now. I mean, <clears> do you believe that's right? So I think there's two things. One, there are the cases that have come forward. It is troubling to me that we found time to look at whether or not to let Derek Batten back into the Labour Party, but yet we know that there are many, many cases of anti-Semitism outstanding, I know, of cases. But there's also something here about the culture of the Labour Party and not waiting till cases come forward if people are concerned about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. We have a proud affiliate called the Jewish Labour Movement, and right now they're talking about possibly not being part of our movement. Now, affiliation means something to me. That's why I'm a socialist, and I feel very strongly that we've got to stand with the Jewish Labour Movement. The Jewish Labour Movement were offering training to every constituency Labour Party about what anti-Semitism is. Because one of the things that's troubled me over the last week is I've had a number of people writing and saying to me, well, I haven't seen any anti-Semitism. Now, Jeremy Corbyn says, rightly, we've got a problem with anti-Semitism. John McDonnell says, rightly, we've got a problem. So it's our membership that actually needs to also have the conversation about what anti-Semitism is. And I'd like to see, as one of the things coming out of this horrific week, a commitment not only to stand by the Jewish Labour movement, but actually take practical action. What do I mean by that? Firstly, I mean writing to every constituency in this country from the Labour Party to tell them about the Jewish Labour movement, how people can join, how they can affiliate. My local party's affiliated to them and we're proud to have them in our movement. But also offering to support the training that they do so that we're not just waiting for these cases to come forward. We can finally put to bed the idea that the Labour Party is institutionally anti-Semitic by not just dealing with the complaints, but also dealing with the concerns about so the So do culture. you think the party is institutionally anti -Semitic? I can understand why people are concerned because even after these complaints have come forward, I'm sad to see that we did select three people who were Holocaust deniers to be Labour candidates at a local government level. Now, the vast majority of Labour members, I've been proud to be in this party for 26 years, and they are proud anti-racism campaigners. So actually what we should want to do is get out there, have that training, be proud about the fact we're talking about these issues in the Labour movement, not see it as a threat, but see it as part of our DNA. If you feel so strongly about this, why are you still a member of the party? I've been a member of the Labour Party for 26 years. I don't have blind loyalty to the Labour movement. I have ideological loyalty. I'm a socialist. I want a radically different, progressive country, and I want to fight for it. And I want to work with everybody in the Labour movement to do that. So this is part of what I stand for. But that doesn't mean that my loyalty is silent to this party. It means that I stand up and I speak up. And it's a difficult question for all of us. And I, I listen to Sadiq Khan when he says, actually, we are all guardians of the Labour values that we care about, that brought us into this party, that frankly bring us here on a Sunday morning, championing what Labour can do for this country. We all have a duty to make us the best of the Labour movement. And that's also at a local level as well as a national level. That's why I think that training and that commitment to actually having that conversation about what anti-Semitism is. You know, when I hear people say this is about criticism of Israel, and yet with the same breath holding all Jews accountable for what happens from the Israeli government, I know we've got a job of work to do. When sadly members in my own local party write Free Palestine in response to the concerns about anti-Semitism from other Labour MPs on my Facebook page, I know we have a job of work to do. And yes, I have heard anti-Semitism expressed in the Labour Party. That is why I'm determined to stand up for the reputation of the vast majority of members who know it's wrong and know now we need to show that we're going to do something about it. Emily Thornbury, uh, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, said she'd rather die than leave the Labour Party. Is that how you feel? <laughs> I am passionate about socialism. I'm passionate about what it can do for this country. As I said, I'm not silent, therefore, about when I see challenges within the Labour movement and within society. At 
26 years of being a Labour Party member, I've never entirely agreed with any Labour leader and I've always fought for Labour governments because I think we have a case to make to the British public. I understand right now why people are asking us questions about anti-Semitism and I think there are things that we can do to so rise can, to that can challenge. Can you rule out leaving the Labour Party? Yes, I've okay. been a Labour Party member. I've been very clear I'm not going anywhere. I'm standing with the Jewish Labour movement. I'm standing with my colleagues like Ruth Smith. But I'm also here today to say the reports you've heard about what's happened to people like Louise Almond are completely unacceptable. And I hope on Monday when the PLP reconvenes again, we're going to hear about concrete actions like some of the things I've just suggested that will help us deal with this problem and break this. Now, it really struck uh, me this week that two-thirds of the independent group are women. And I just wonder if you think that, perhaps with the sort of toxic nature of some of our politics online, do you think that women in particular get a bit of a raw deal? I think women can't win. One of the things I'm on a mission to do is to end the concept of difficult women, because I always say, I'm not difficult, I'm just different. I bring a different set of experiences, a different set of ideas to the table. But it is absolutely true that we've seen women in particular targeted. And I am horrified as well by what I've seen happen to my colleague, Diane Abbott, who's also one of my next door neighbour MPs. Undoubtedly, misogyny is intertwined in this. Indeed, there was a conference recently about misogyny and anti-Semitism and how those have been intertwined as well. There is clearly something going wrong with our politics across the piece when it's particularly voices that perhaps haven't been heard before are trying to be silenced. What I would say to everybody is this isn't just a problem for Jewish people to sort out or for women to sort out. All of us miss out when our politics is full of anger rather than answers. And it means we don't hear the contribution some of those new ideas can come from as a result. Well, let's um, talk about the anger in our politics <laughs> yeah. in a minute, because it feels like it's a really aggressive place. Uh, one yeah, of the I'm sorry, that... I got really cross the other night on your Twitter feed. I'm really sorry. No, that's fine. We're allowed to be angry sometimes, but it just feels that it's yeah. kind of... People are aggressive, shall we say, at, at other times. Um, and one of the quotes that stood out to me this week was from the uh, chair of Gavin Shuka's constituency Labour Party. We have a little look now. Uh, he, of course, is one of the people who left the Labour Party. Uh, the chair said, we look forward to him calling a by-election where he will be annihilated and consigned to the dustbin of history where he belongs. Now, clearly emotions are running high. There's yes. a lot of anger yes. directed towards these MPs who many in the Labour movement feel yeah. are making a Conservative government more likely. What do you make by the tone of the debate? So when I see things like this, I think about the brilliant words of Ruth Smith today, like this week rather, in Parliament. And she said one of the reasons that she was standing up and fighting with the Labour wasn't actually about MPs. It was about every young campaigner, every activist who hasn't yet got involved in the Labour Party, hasn't yet contributed to what we're doing, hasn't yet helped us fight for a Labour government, who sees and hears things like that and says, actually, this isn't for me. We all have a responsibility to change that culture. We all have a responsibility. Look, it's important to have robust debate. I've lost lots of arguments within the Labour Party. I'll continue to make arguments. I'm in a different place than a lot of people say, for example, on Brexit. I would like to see us have that second referendum. But those are policy arguments. This is about our culture and how we speak to each other and what we show the electorate a Labour Party and a Labour movement is about. We've got to be the best of ourselves. And the best of ourselves is not digging down other people. It's standing up for what we believe in and being passionate about the positive difference it will make for our country. Has Jeremy Corbyn done enough? I think it's right that people are asking Jeremy to be part of it. Sometimes I think this goes back to first principles, just saying first and clearly that every Jewish member of our Labour movement should feel proud to be part of the Labour movement. And if they don't, it's a problem for all of us, that every woman's voice should be welcome in the Labour so movement. How, has he done so that? I'd like to see Jeremy just start with some of those first principles. I, I, I take my hat off to him. He's fighting really hard to get us a Labour government. But I think sometimes he hasn't yet said those first principles, just been clear, a bit like Essex University this week, didn't simply say that every Jewish student should feel welcome on campus, and if they didn't, it was a problem for them. And then we see 200 people voting against the existence of a Jewish uh, society. Sometimes it's just important to state what you believe is important, and that's what I think Jeremy's got to do first and foremost. Uh, while I've got you, I'm interested to get your thoughts on a very different story that's been in the news uh, this week about Shamima Begum. You yeah. represent Walthamstow, a very diverse um, community. Um, I just wonder what you think should happen to Shamima Begum, who, of course, is the Bethnal Green schoolgirl uh, mm -hmm. who left the UK uh, when she was a teenager to join Islamic State. She's just given birth. Yeah. 
So I have to say, What's Sophie, that? I'm slightly concerned that you've pointed out I represent a diverse community, because actually my concern about the Shamina Began case is nothing to do with the diversity of my community. It's a worry I have to see a Home Secretary seeking essentially to make policy on the hoof without proper scrutiny in Parliament. I have no sympathy for Shamina Began, but I absolutely am concerned to see somebody's citizenship being stripped away. And last night we started seeing the comment pieces suggesting that she wasn't really British even though she was born here. This is a very worrying trend. We've seen the rise of the far right in this country. We've seen the rise of that kind of divisive, hateful rhetoric. And actually, it's not about people in Walthamstow. It's about the, the, the morality of this country, full stop. It is by these difficult cases and the tests that they set us for whether we stand up for our principles that you should know us. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think should happen then? Oh, I think she should come back here and face the full force of the law. I have no sympathy for her. I'm concerned she might know about other uh, issues of terrorism that she needs to be properly uh, interrogated about. But I certainly think that the idea that stripping her citizenship and making it makes the problem go away, it doesn't. And I'm deeply, deeply worried by a Home Secretary who doesn't stand up for the importance of the rule of law and due process. Because if he can do it to one person, he can do it to other people. OK, Stella Creasy, thank you very much.